Oh, folks, we're reaching that time of year where both of the teams I'm managing in my Twitch save and here in my main save on YouTube are getting to the point where we can go Wonder Kid shopping, which means only one thing. Everyone keeps asking me how I'm finding all of the Wonder Kids in my save. So in this video, I am going to take you through the process I go through when managing a big club to make sure we always have a ready supply of Wonder Kids coming into the club. And as ever, we're going to do it without touching the player search screen. And I think probably the easiest way to demonstrate it is using my current Twitch save with Roma because we're a little bit further ahead in that one than we are in non-league to legend. This is going to be a process that if we stick with Burton for another year or two, in that save, based on the time of recording, you'll start to see us going through this process in real time in that save. But we've kind of just gone through it in this one. It's 2031. We've been at Roma just over a year. When I arrived at this club, it was it was absolutely chock full of old men, as AI clubs seven, eight, nine seasons into the future so often are in Football Manager. The average age was like 34, and we have got rid of a lot of of players. Not only have we got rid of a lot of players less than a year into the job, as you can see, we've replaced them with a lot of very young, very good players, including more than our fair share of Wonder Kids and Wonder Kids that we picked up for really good prices as well. Um, that guy's not actually got a media description of Wonder Kid. Believe me, he'll get there. Wonder Kid is a description of current ability based on age rather than potential ability, but he's got loads of potential. We picked him up for 13 and a half million. This guy is a legitimate Wonder Kid. There you go. Wonder Kid. Six foot six Wonder Kid striker who we signed for 18 million pounds and is now worth in the region of 100 million after just a couple of games. We've got a 20 year old Wonder Kid who we signed for 3.6 million pounds. Um, we have to pick out the younger ones to make sure they are what is he? Uh, no, he's the one we just looked at. Um, I think you're a Wonder Kid as well. Gurkan um, is a 20 year old Turkish Wonder Kid that we picked up for 22 million pounds. Uh, there's more and more examples. He's a Wonder Kid as well, or again, I think he was when we signed him and has actually pushed on beyond it now, um, probably because he's had a birthday. But when he came in, yeah, 54 million from Barcelona. It's not necessarily a bargain, but he was still a wonder kid when he arrived. And it goes on and on and on. We could just keep going down. And I'm sure there's a few more of these that are already wonder kids or about, there you go, he's a wonder kid. Um, is he one yet? Because he certainly will be. Yeah, he's a wonder kid as well. And we've done all this, like I say, in a year or so. And we've done it without ever touching the player search screen. And this is how I do my Wonder Kid shopping, my big club transfer stuff, at any big club in any save, pretty much. And it's easier than you would imagine to the point where I've even started doing it in my Burton Albion save as well. Now, Burton, first year in the Premier League, tiny, tiny club with no money. Um, but this guy, Luis Avalos, is an 18-year-old Argentinian under-20 international, not yet showing as a wonder kid, although he's got three-star current ability, five-star potential ability. But we picked him up for £3.6 million, just plucked him straight out of Argentina. And this guy, Damien O'Donoghue, legitimate wonder kid, who's been on the next-gen list twice since we've signed him, we actually managed to pick him up on a free transfer. He cost us nothing at all and the two years he's been with us at the club, he's made it onto the next-gen list both times. And the simple version of how I've done that is I kind of just get out of the game's way and let it do its thing. What I mean by that um, is scouting stuff. You're not going to see me doing lots of clicking around on this scouting tab. I never click on the... Uh, on the. I mean, it's not even called the player search screen anymore, the... Players in range tab. I just don't use it. I never search for attributes, use filters, any of that kind of stuff. In fact, most of the time, I don't even look at the attributes before deciding whether or not to sign these players. I'm not signing them based on their attributes at all. Um, if we look at the recruitment focuses that we've got, they're literally just the ones that come off the back of the um, of the recruitment meetings that we have. I haven't set any specific ones up. Scout priorities. I've got one guy currently being scouted. Um, we can look at our scouting assignments and you can see that most of them are just kind of roaming about the world. We've got a couple of guys in Argentina because we've set up a scouting focus for Argentina because we've got an Argentinian staff member. Um, but largely, they're just hanging out in Europe or around the rest of the world 
kind of waiting to be told what to do. Um, and it's all being managed, not by me, but by uh, but by my scouting team. If you look at the scouting setup, I'm not managing any of this myself. I'm not doing the scouting meetings. I'm not assigning my scouts. I'm not going through the scout reports, looking for their feedback. None of that stuff. It is literally just all being handled by my staff. And I tend not to have like super staff. I mean, we have actually got some pretty good staff here at Roma. That is a pretty decent director of football. He's Man City's director of football in real life. He was here when I got here. I didn't hide him. Our chief scout, yeah, okay, he's pretty good as well. Uh, this guy is doing some scouting, also pretty good. But we are Roma. <laughs> Add some context here. If we were to look at the staff we've got at Burton, in fact, let's look at the staff we've got at Burton, and you'll see it's set up exactly the same here at Burton, and this time the scouts are a much lower level. In fact, it's all being handled by my chief scout, Lee Fraser, who, as at a Premier League club, has got a 14 for scouting player ability or judging player ability, and a 13 for judging player potential. And he got, he's finding those wonder kids. We've just shown you two of them. There's going to be a load more when we do the next transfer special that will be coming up very, very soon. So these guys are handling all of the scouting stuff themselves without being involved. And then the only input I have with these players from our scouting is when I go into our scouted players list and I look at them for the first time in here. It, that's not the only way players are added to this list, but most of my interaction comes from this list. We'll come back to the list in a second. I just want to talk about some of the other ways players end up in this list. One of the other things that we do, um, again, back in staff responsibilities, this time on transfers, um, I always set somebody to be doing initiating player signings for players. Now, I'm not just going to sign those players blind. I kind of use this as an extra scout because more often than not, certainly the better quality staff you've got, and we've seen how good my director of football is here, but more often than not, they'll recommend some pretty good young players as part of this. If they try and sign a 32-year-old, I just ignore it. If they try and sign a 19-year-old, I'm going to send my scout to go and have a look at him, and then he'll end up on my scouted player list. Another way that we'll do it is we'll go to director of football recommendations, go to suggest transfer targets, and depending on whether we want a transfer, a loan or free transfer, maybe all of them, we'll just go through the positions one by one and or one by one based on what we want to sign. We're not going to necessarily look for a left back if we've already got a really good left back, but we'll just go through, get scout recommendations, scout those players as well. None of them are particularly young, but if we go through enough of these, I'm sure we will find some players that will pop up who would count as wonder kid age, he says. Um, it, where are we? November. It might be a little bit early in the season. I think probably all the saleable wonder kids have already been hoovered up by big clubs now, but if we were to do this process in April or May, just after we've got lots of new players emerge, you'd probably get some... Yeah, there's, it's not going to show me any really young ones now, but um, I'll literally do that and then sort it by age and send my scouts to look at the younger ones. So even in this situation, I mean, he's probably a little too old to class as a wonder kid and probably also a little bit too far down the develop, development line already having made England appearances and played for Nottingham Forest in the Premier League but we'd potentially send our scouts to look at this guy certainly if we got him a little bit earlier and the fact that Arsenal are interested and you can still pick him up for around 50 million he's probably going to be pretty good and that's just come straight out of my director of football recommendations hit scout player he now goes into the system another way that I'll add players into the system that I can't show you currently because of the stage of the season the next gen report I mean you knew this one, this one was coming when you get that next gen winner that comes through every year I've already mentioned from Burton that Damien O'Donoghue has been on the next gen list twice but around about March April time every year I don't know exactly when it happens um, you get an email with the winner of the next gen and you also get the full top 50, basically top 50 best young players in the world. If you are at a top level club, i.e. a level of club that is capable of signing, not even not necessarily the best players on that list, but if you're capable of signing anyone from that list, especially if you've got someone on the list, you want to be scouting every single player on that list. Again, just right click, scout them, get them into the system. And uh, it's just a whole load of free as in three, three leads. They're not going to be three players, but a whole load of players that you can add into that scouting system who you know are young, you know are pretty good. They're not all going to be great, 
sometimes you get some pretty ropey players on that list um, and they're not all going to be affordable. Some, I mean, I think early on in the game, um, you get some real like proper superstars on there. He's, I, Bellingham might have aged out of it this year, but I think last year um, Jude Bellingham was on it like first year. So yeah, take it with a pinch of salt. There's players you can't necessarily sign on there as well, but you usually will get a bunch of very good young players off of that. And more often than not, there'll be a handful of them that you can afford to sign. You get them all into your scouted players list and then you just start working this list. I, I mean, for this process, I'll often take interested off initially certainly you've a bigger club because if they're a good young player you can often make them interested even if they're not interested you could leave that on if you want to save yourself some time and um, but then if you're looking specifically for wonder kids i would come here i would put the age down to maybe 20 21 even as young as 19 if you want the if you want players i mean you could even set it to 18 if you want players you've got the potential to become homegrown at your club um so set the age range to whatever age range you're looking at um i think a good one is usually a 21 you might find a couple who've maybe slipped through the net of some of the bigger clubs um i value on this page far more than current ability or even potential ability the thing I value most here is the scout recommendation. When it comes to things like current ability and potential ability, you do have to take them with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Like any of this stuff in the game, it's all only as good as the scouts that you've got. These are not absolute values. We're not playing FIFA here, boys and girls. A five-star player when you're at Roma is not the same as a five-star player when you're at Burton Albion, and it's definitely not the same as a five-star player when you're managing in the conference. It varies according to the level of your club, the level of your current players, and the quality of your scouts but one thing to be afraid of is these white stars you can see that for a lot of these players who theoretically look like they've got the highest current ability of all of these players at the moment this guy sam de Brule, um three and a half stars of current ability five star potential yes we'll have him hang on though the only ones that are actually locked in are the ones that are yellow. So he could be as bad as two stars of current ability two and a half stars of potential the white ones are basically where your scout doesn't know yet. It might be they don't know because they've not scouted them enough. It might be that they're too young. There's still too many variables up in the air. Um, but you kind of want to avoid too much in the way of white stars, especially if they've got a lot of white stars and they've got a C or a D recommendation like this guy, Eric Nordstrom. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can get a three and a half star current ability winger, for 1.6 million, fill your boots, but he's only got a D and minimal scouting knowledge. I think once he's properly scouted, he'll actually turn out to be pretty rubbish. Scouting recommendation, on the other hand, you can see if you get the players who've got the A+, plus, the A ratings and the scouting recommendation, a couple of things happen. Uh, one, they tend to be better players anyway. And two, we've got rid of most of those white stars because for a scout to be confident enough to give them an A plus recommendation, they're going to have extensive knowledge and they are going to be pretty sure that these players are good. So the best player that we've got on our scouted list in our age group at the moment is this guy, Ab Abde... Who are he? This guy, this Dutch right back. He's got a fifty-two million pound release clause. If you're Barcelona or Chelsea or someone with loads of money to throw around, absolutely go for it. We're not going for a fifty-two million pound player. I actually looked at him multiple times over the summer. Would love to sign him. We can't spend fifty-two million pounds on potential. So what we're doing is we're trying to narrow it down to the players who've got the highest recommendations and then find the bargains from within them. The reason there aren't many is because I've already had them. It's November. I've already had the bargains. But you basically want all of your knowledge here to be extensive. So I will regularly, over the course of a season, come to this screen, kind of as and when I remember to do it, um, filter it by recommendation, and then just take the top, I don't know, top... 20 or so maybe and just rescout them and just constantly be rescouting them so that the players who are at the top of the list have always got up-to-date scout reports and scouted as extensively as possible if you've got someone who's extensively scouted and the scout report was done a week ago and he's showing as an a-plus recommendation he is good to go sign that boy if you can afford him and like i say this there's, there's not really much in the way of bargain options that we could afford here i guess this is this is the one guy at the kind of level we're at now we could potentially drop 16 to 18 million pounds on a young player who's got i mean he's 17 years old so he can become homegrown at the club and uh i I suspect this is somebody who I'll be having a look at 
maybe in January, maybe in the summer next year. We don't really have any money to spend um, remaining this season um, because we've spent it all. We've spent it all on bargains like this guy, £3.6 million. We found him exactly through this process, playing in the Serbian League. Hadn't even played a lot in the Serbian League, but was shown as having a lot of potential. And we were able to pick him up on the cheap, so we brought him in. We didn't even necessarily need him, but we brought him in, and now we're going to play him and see if he gets good. Again, this guy, who's a legitimate wonder kid now, is just £19 million coming in from Spain. There's a couple of these that will throw really big money at. The guy we've signed from Barcelona, we spent that much money on him because we knew we really, really, really wanted him, and he was already going to he was going to come in as one of our best players. He's not really been signed as a wonder kid, even though he's young. But the majority of our wonder kids, at the level we're at currently, they're sub twenty million pound players, and that gives you a couple of boosts. Boost one is you get to sign more of them. Um, if you're spending 200, 300 million pounds in a summer, which you're not going to do every year, but if you are spending two or 300 million pounds in a summer, if your players are in the 15 to 20 million pound range, you can get 10 of them. Whereas if they're 50 or 60 million pounds each, you can only get three or four. If you get 10, you're more likely to end up with some that are any good. So you get to have more of these young players, which is what we've done this summer gone for volume because we needed a big rebuild being done at Roma um, but also signing them cheap means even if you don't end up finding a space for them in your team long term you can sell them on at a profit. Looking at Predrag Dodjnevic again there is no uh, there is no scenario where we don't win with this signing he's got five stars of potential he's already a full international we spent 3.6 million pounds on him he either becomes a superstar for us or we sell him on for massive money. We make a profit on him. Either way, we win. And that's going to be the case with all of these guys that we've brought in. Looking again at him, his value has immediately gone up. So either we use him or we sell him on at a profit. That guy's value has gone up massively. He's already showing three and a half stars of current ability. This is what happens when you play them. The ones you play will get good fast. Um, I think this guy is always on a cusp of being a wonder kid. But even he... Um, we'll be able to probably double our money on if we were to sell him in a year, even without him fully ascending to wonder kid status. So you want to get them cheap and you want to get a lot of them. And one thing you'd noticed I haven't really talked about at all is actually looking at the attributes and deciding if they're any good or not. I mean, it's really not something I spend a lot of time looking at in Football Manager. You lot will probably have stronger opinions than me looking at the attributes of this guy. They're fine. <laughs> you know, there's there's none of the ones that are highlighted for his position that he's below 10 on. They're fine. Um, I'm far more interested in the fact he was cheap and he's got all of this potential. Because, like I say, the more volume you can get in, the more chance you've got of having the ones that really, really hit. And I'm never completely sure which ones are going to hit. It's part of the fun of doing it this way. I didn't know for sure that this guy was going to be the guy. Um, but he's come in. He scored four goals in six appearances, averaging a 7.5. He's six foot six. And I mentioned that. I love a big meaty boy. Um, but he's come straight in. His current ability is shut up massively already. And his value has gone through the roof. We have won big with Ivan Vucinic to the point where, you know, if we were to do, if we were to get a couple of players who had that kind of response on a window like this, you could almost call the window profitable, which is mad. But you're kind of getting into that realm. I imagine if we were to sell this guy at any point in the next two or three years, we're getting a hundred million pound plus for him. Because even at 21, people will still pay for his potential. And not only will they have his potential, they'll have all of that incredible current ability and goals and things as well. It would be awesome. So just to glance over at my notes to summarize, I summarized with five points on here on these. Point one, don't fiddle with your scouting, just let the game do it. The game knows what it's doing. Let it do the scouting, get out of its way, let it do its own thing. Number two, which is something that I haven't mentioned yet, is you want to identify who your best judging uh, judging potential ability scout is. So if we go to our recruitment team here at Roma, go to the mental attributes, we want the guy who's the very best at judging potential. So for in our example, it's this guy, Vito Lecese. Send him 
after every player that you're considering buying. He's got 20 out of 20 for judging player potential. Potential is a thing we are interested. So much more than ability, we care about their potential. So this guy is as good as it gets at judging potential. Every player you're considering signing, send Vito to look at them. Send your Vito, not my Vito. Get your own Vito. Send him to go and look at your potential incoming players. If Vito says they're five-star potential, they're five-star potential. Vito knows. And from there, it's really simple. If they meet the criteria of five-star potential and cheap, and cheap obviously is very context sensitive, depending on the club you're managing, the league you're in, and the amount of money that you've got. If you consider them cheap for your circumstances and they've got five-star potential, sign them. It doesn't matter if they are in a position that you need. It doesn't matter if you like the look of their attributes or not. If they're five-star potential and cheap, you sign them because one of two things is going to happen. Either you do fit them in somewhere, they play, they're brilliant, you've got a superstar on your hands, or you can't really fit them in because you didn't really need them. But because they're young and they've got all that potential, you'll still be able to sell them on at a profit, maybe get three, four, five times your money for them, and then you reinvest that in another three or four cheap five-star potential players further down the line a year or two later, and you just keep the process going, and each one you bring in turns into three or four in the future, and so on. And every now and again, you'll get one who ends up as a breakout star in your team. Point four, use your director of football. They are, without doubt, the most important member of staff that you've got. It's why I was so happy here at Roma when we had such a good one when I arrived. I didn't have to go out and do anything. This guy is about as good as it gets. I'm a little bit worried that he's 67 years old. I hope he plans to work well into his 80s because he is phenomenal. If you have a good director of football, everything else gets that much easier. Have a good director of football and use them. Have them initiating player transfers and then send Vito to check those players that he's initiating the transfer on. Use the director of football recommendations. Have him managing the scouting process on your staff responsibility page. Get a good director of football and use him. He is your most important member of staff and you get a good one and you will then get a good flow of wonder kids coming through the club. If you if you have a good director of football and follow this framework, this system, you are guaranteed to have at any one time at least half a dozen wonder kids in and around your first team squad every year. And then lastly, and arguably most importantly, as we mentioned before, absolutely abuse the next gen list. If I have a look through the signings that I brought in this summer, off the top of my head, the ones that came off the next gen, I think Enric did, or like maybe he didn't because he's 21 now. Um, this guy did, Dodge, Dodge, the, the guy who's 3.6 million, he was definitely off the next gen list. We are not scouting Serbia. Uh, we don't have anyone going to Serbia specifically. He was on the next gen list and we were able to pick him up as a bargain. Uh, Granero was off of the next gen list as well. Um, I think Vucinic was off of the next gen list because again we're not scouting Saudi Arabia. Um he was definitely on the next gen list and potentially Jallo was next gen as well at 18 years old at Sporting. So that's four three of which are already wonder kids and one of which in Jallo is going to become one. Um I don't have any doubt at all that he becomes a wonder kid in the next 6 months to a year if we use him. They're all off the next gen list. Use and abuse the next gen list. It's what it's there for. And I guess above all else, once you get them in, play them. If you're not going to play them, send them out to someone else to play them because in order for them to start fulfilling that potential, you need to play them. They have to play matches in order for their current ability to go up. So if you're not going to be able to play them, loan them out. If you can't even, if you don't want to loan them out, sell them before they're 21. Buy them at 18 or 19 cheap. Sell them at 20 or 21. These, these are for the ones you absolutely never plan to use. Buy them at 18 or 19. Sell them at 20 or 21. They'll still have that high potential. They'll still fetch a high price because of the potential. And you then never even have to acknowledge they exist. You'll still make money on them. It's uh, it's the it's the wonder kid machine, and it works wonderfully. And like I say, it's pretty much how I do this in every save that I play. I am actively doing it at the moment with Roma over on Twitch. I'll be streaming over there tonight, continuing the process. Or you've got the uh, the history of how it happened over on Lelujo Two, where we put the stream highlights out every morning, and it will be happening this coming week in Nominee to Legend with Burton. We have got transfer windows coming up. 
and you will see me gradually over the next few seasons. As long as we manage to stay in the Premier League over the next few seasons, you will see us add more and more Wonder Kids to the squad using this system. The only thing that will stop me is relegation from the Premier League or leaving to go to a different club. If we are still at Burton in the Premier League in two years' time, I guarantee there will be six Wonder Kids in the first team. Guaranteed. Because that's how we do it. If you enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.